with parliamentary colleagues and all New Zealanders in the thoughts already expressed and in sending our sympathies to our brothers and sisters in Victoria as they deal with displays and the destruction it has caused. Melbourne has experienced one of the biggest, most destructive fires in recent history anywhere in the world. The destruction is not over yet, nor is the loss. When we look at the pictures of crumpled houses reduced to ashes, we can only imagine the trauma suffered. When we look at scenes of exhaustion and the traumatised faces on firefighters and families, we are compelled to share their grief. And we send our best wishes as we imagine the rebuilding of homes and lives and communities which lie ahead. If there's one thing we New Zealanders know about our brothers and sisters across the Tasman, it is that they are people of enormous courage. Victorian families will need all that Aussie dauntlessness now and in the months ahead. I'm proud that New Zealanders are doing their bit to pitch in and we support the Prime Minister's uh, resolutions on this matter. I remember the heroic New Zealand firefighters who fought alongside some fantastically brave Australians in the 2006 bushfires. Some of them are going back yet again. For Australia, the toll caused by the inferno is as shocking as the 9-11 tragedy in America if you compare the size of the populations. It is all the more bitter irony that the fire is blazing while floods drench North Queensland. Many homes have been lost, many lives have been lost, many lives have been shattered and many families have lost everything. So Australia and Australians, we in New Zealand wish you well in the face of this crisis with the assurance that we stand with you in any way we possibly can. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, on behalf of United Future, I want to support the resolution that's been moved by the Prime Minister this afternoon and to endorse the comments that others have made in this debate. Australia is enduring its worst peacetime tragedy with these fires. And the loss of so many innocent lives, the destruction of property and livelihoods and experiences and communities is something that will not be put to rest once the fires are extinguished. Life will take a very long time to return to normal for those affected communities and families and for that country as a whole. And Mr Speaker, I think it's great that New Zealanders are showing their support and their encouragement for their Australian kith and kin at this time. I think that the enormity of what's happened is difficult to comprehend, but simple images convey a stark story. The cars on the edge of the road where the fire overtook the victims. The houses that look like crumpled messes. The people standing shell-shocked amongst those ruins, shaking their heads and saying they've lost everything from children to material possessions. They are beyond our ability to comprehend. They su suggest the enormity of what's taking place and the need for people all around Australia and this country to come together to support the Australian people in their moment of crisis. I support the motion and I encourage New Zealanders to be as generous with their resources as they are with their sentiments at the moment in helping Australia address this awful tragedy. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I would now ask honourable members to stand in silence as a mark of respect to those who have lost their lives in the tragic bushfires in Australia.
Thank you. Honourable well, members, from next sitting day, I intend to make a change to the Speaker's procession in order that this long-standing parliamentary tradition may be more accessible to the public. The procession at 2 p.m. each sitting day will move south along the Speaker's corridor from the Speaker's office into the Parliament House foyer, turn right into the lobby through the double doors and enter the House through the visitor's door past the bar of the House. The Sergeant-at-Arms will take up a position at the end of the table ready to lay the mace on the table and the Speaker will take the chair via the Government side of the table. The new route for the Speaker's procession will take no longer than the previous one, but it will be in view of the public. Members will be held back momentarily in the Parliament House foyer and at the visitor's door entrance while the procession passes, but will be able to join the tail of the procession to enter the chamber after the Speaker before the doors are closed for prayers. The doors to the eyes and nose lobbies and the Ministers' and Speakers' doors will be closed at 2 p.m. when the Sergeant-at-Arms announces the Speaker's arrival in the House, as is the current practice. This will ensure that members do not impede the Speaker moving through the chamber to the chair. These new arrangements for the, for the procession will apply only at 2 p.m. each sitting day. At all other times, the presiding officers will enter and leave the chamber through the Speaker's door. For members' information, I'll make a copy of this announcement available in members' bill boxes. Point of order, uh, Dr. Speaker, uh, Dr. Perhaps to ensure, in order to ensure the dignity of your office, you'll be making it clear you will not be available for questions by the media during that procession. <laughs> I, thank the, uh, I thank the honourable member uh, for that point. Jeanette Fitzsimons. Mr. Speaker, I seek leave to move without notice or debate a motion on MPs' remuneration, which has been advised to all party leaders. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Mr Speaker, I move that the members of this House, recognising that in the current economic situation, government revenue is reduced, many New Zealanders are losing their jobs or overtime, and more government spending is required to invest in job creation and income support, agree to support a cross-party submission to the Remuneration Authority, asking it to refrain from raising MPs' salaries during the 2009 review. We commit to revisiting this issue in 2010. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Are there any petitions? The petition of Glenda Louise Gibson requesting that the House note that 2,255 people have signed a petition to express their concern to the threat to the jobs of New Zealand mushroom staff and that the House acts to protect these jobs. Are there any papers? Budget Policy Statement 2009 and Economic and Fiscal Forecast December 2008. Government responses to the reports of the Common Commerce Committee on the inquiry into housing affordability in New Zealand and the inquiry into valuation methodology and practice for valuing state-owned enterprises. Government response to the report of the Maori Affairs Committee on the petition of Hariata ba Baker. Government response to the report of the Social Services Committee on the inquiry into quality of care and services provision for people with disabilities. Report of the Minister of Commerce and the Minister for the Environment on the operation of the ozone layer protection